everyone. My name is Courtney. I write under the pen names Lyra Parrish, and I'm one half of the USA Today bestselling duo Kennedy Fox. And today I am going to complete the final Photoshop tutorial that I have been promising you all for a little while. Shout out to Piper Rain. They are a duo of authors who has requested this video for me several times. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to teach you how to place the front cover and the spine and possibly the back cover on an image in Photoshop. If you are not familiar with the Image Apothecary. It is a company that was created by Regina Wamba, who is a photographer, who is also a graphic designer. She takes these beautiful flat lay photos that have like a white book cover so you can add your cover on to these images. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to do if you're not really sure where to start. I do have some very, very basic tutorials that I will link in the description. I'll also put the first one right up here in this little info box where you can go and click on it. I do recommend that you watch that video first because that's the basics and we're gonna build upon that whole concept to be able to do this. So without further ado, we're gonna hop into Photoshop and we're gonna go ahead and get started. This is a photo from the Image Apothecary's collection called Finer Things. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put the front cover, the spine, and the back cover on this image. Right now I'm using Photoshop CC 2018. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this square and we're going to draw a rectangle over the front cover of this book. And we're trying to get it about the same size that it is actually going to be, but we're going to adjust this slightly as well. So we've got the front cover. I'm going to go ahead and press enter and then I'm going to go over here to the right hand side where it says rectangle and I'm going to right click it and I'm going to convert to smart object. What a smart object is essentially is now when I double click on that, I can add a book cover right there where that black square is. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to adjust this black square and I'm gonna press Command T on a Mac and I am going to move it and kind of position it where it fits on top of this book cover. I'm actually gonna take the opacity down a bit just so I can kind of see what's going on behind it and I'm gonna zoom in a bit so I can make it almost perfect. So we're just gonna play with this just for a second. I'm actually gonna right click here and I'm gonna press warp and that's gonna allow me to adjust it and tweak it even more than I already have. That's why it's important to kind of get it around the same size so then you don't have to do too much of this. We're gonna zoom in just a tad more. Bring this up just a little bit. And now I'm gonna press enter to keep it where it's at. If you're not completely happy with the way that this looks, you can press Command T again and keep adjusting until you are happy. You're gonna wanna right click here, press warp, like up here I feel like it can actually be moved up just a slight bit more and then over here brought in just a tad. It's the perfectionist in me guys, I'm sorry. I will like play with this all day long so we're just gonna go ahead and press enter and that looks pretty good. Next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make the spine now. So we're gonna go to the left hand side and click that little square and then we're gonna try to make it about the same size as the spine and about the same length and I think that looks good right there. We're gonna go over to the right hand side and we're gonna right click that triangle and we are going to convert to smart object. Now we've got a smart object. You can tell right here by that little square in the corner that it's a smart object. And now we're gonna control T and we're gonna to try to adjust this the same way that we did the front cover. I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna press warp. I'm just gonna tweak it just a slight bit more. All right, I think that looks good. So we're gonna press enter to place it. And actually go and check the opacity and see what it looks like behind there. And actually, if you zoom in, you can kind of see that it's not completely even. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that just a tad. You don't really want it to overlap. And you can tell here that it is. So I'm going to bring that in there as well. Move this a little bit. And you can use your arrow keys to get it almost... Perfect with the other side. A little overlap's not that huge of a deal. You just don't want it to be really, really overlapped. All right. So I'm still going to press warp. So I'm going to go up here and fix the spine where it looks like it's kind of curving with the cover. All right. 
and that looks pretty good to me. So now what we're going to do is we are going to do the back cover now. Same principle as the other two. We're going to make our little square. Hey everyone, this is Editing Courtney here and I just want to let you know that I made a mistake and I did not make a perfect rectangle for the back cover. So whenever you look at this, you're probably going to be like, whoa, how did the front and spine already get on there? And that's because of the mistake that I made. I just put this part here so then you would know how to do it. So yes, mistakes happen, but I refuse to re-record this video. So um, yeah, we're going to continue forward. We're going to convert it to a smart object and actually going to fix this up real quick. Command T, shift to bring it over here and we're going to bring it back. And sometimes this happens. You kind of want these lines to be even, otherwise things are not going to line up correctly. It's going to be slightly awkward. So I like to make sure that they are kind of straight. So here's the point where I kind of like zoom in and I check to see how much overlap I have. And so like right here, I'm going to want to bring this over just a tad to make sure it really lines up. And then down here, there's a little bit of white still showing. And over here just a tad right there. Okay. I actually think it's going to go up a little bit more right there. I think that is good. I know that there's some corners right here. I'm going to show you real quick how we're going to get rid of that and his hands. And so what you're going to do is you're actually going to go up to layer and you're going to go to layer mask, reveal all, and you're gonna use your paintbrush. It is the brush tool. You can press the quick key B. And, and for this, your main colors are black and white. Black is your eraser, white is basically your undo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to essentially clean up the areas where this cover doesn't need to be. One of the main places is the corners, so I'm just going to kind of clean that up right there and kind of right here needs to be cleaned up. And then we're going to erase where his fingers are. I know that some of you like the masking tool where you can like select his fingers and delete everything around it. I'm not a Photoshop pro, so disclaimer. I actually enjoy doing this a lot more because I feel like I'm quicker than trying to figure out all of the quick selection and layer masks and all of that. Um, so if you have a quicker way of doing this, feel free to use it. I know enough in Photoshop, as I've mentioned before, to get me in trouble. So, okay, his fingers are cleaned up. We're going to go to the other layer and do the same thing. We're going to go layer, layer mask, reveal all. And now we're going to erase where his fingers are here. So it actually looks like he is really grabbing our book. And... Cleaning that up just a tad. If for some reason you like go like that, um, you can also, you can always press undo or you can go over here and press this little triangle thing, make it white and then erase where that is. And it's not even that big of a deal. It's like it didn't even really happen. So it can always be fixed. So don't you worry. You'll know enough in Photoshop after I'm done with you, that you can get in trouble with me. So, okay, and now we're gonna go to the first layer, layer, layer mask, reveal all, and do the same exact thing, kind of clean up where his fingers are. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect as far as the cleanup, because when most people glance at it, they're not looking at it the same way that you are. So if it's not exact, it's totally cool, it's totally cool. So at a glance, people are looking at it at this level. You can't see that it's not a super fine edge on his fingers. I probably will clean this up right here, though, just because I felt like I could see it. 
Oh, wait. See? You got to be on the right layer. You got to be on your layer mask. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up right here. Oops. Use the wrong color. <laughs> so I'm going to clean it up so you don't really see the white. Um, if you want to make this a little smaller, you can do that up there. And I'm really going to try not to be a perfectionist here. I know some of you are probably like, oh my god, girl, just use the selection tool. No. <laughs> okay, that looks fine to me. Especially from a distance. Now you don't see that white. Okay, so home dude is reading a book. What book do we want him to read? A pro tip for you is essentially if you create this and you save it like this, essentially you can go in and add any of your covers into this at this moment. So you can reuse these images after you put, make them. So you can reuse these images after you make them a smart object. And it's super easy at that point because you've done all the hard work. So we're going to go ahead and add covers in here. And the way that you do that is you're going to click on the smart object. You're going to double click. And number one was the front cover. So what I'm doing here is I am actually going to put the cover over the black. We've got it placed. We're going to press enter. We're going to press up here this X. It's going to ask if, if we want to save it and we're going to press yes. And ta-da, here's the front cover. We're going to change the opacity to about 80%. I think if you go full on, it looks really fake. That's why I like to keep the opacity down to about 80% maybe 85, maybe 75%, depending on how dark or light the image is. Now we're going to put the spine, and this is the fun part, because a lot of times on covers, the spine will also have some sort of image on it too. And so I get really crazy about trying to get it to line up, and sometimes you just can't. So you have to do little tweaks on it so it looks correct. So I'm going to grab the paperback version of baby mine and I'm pressing shift here because I want the proportions to be correct you don't want things to look like aliens and so I'm going to make this as big as I possibly can and this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with the image kind of bleeding over to the spine and I'm going to show you kind of like an easy way to fix this. What I'm going to do is duplicate the layer that's got the spine on it and that's going to make us a new layer where we can kind of edit what's going on and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over just a bit where you can see that this edge right here is actually the back cover. So we're going to do layer reveal all and we're going to just start erasing and this is a layer mask on top of it, kind of like how we did at the very start. And all I'm doing is just trying to make this where this side piece doesn't show the front cover, essentially, because we don't want that. It kind of looks sloppy on these images because it doesn't really match. And I'm just trying to essentially clean this up as best as I can right now. Okay, so we're going to bring the opacity back up. And there you go. Um, there's actually a little spot that I kind of deleted. So we're going to make this white, of course. And, oops. And fix that. Okay, so up close, it doesn't look that great. But watch the magic happen right now. You can't even tell in this image. You see what I'm saying? You can't tell at all. So we're going to bring the opacity of this image up just a tad to 80%. There we go. Okay. So and it really doesn't take that long once you realize, essentially, like what went wrong. And I can tell you that when I did it, I didn't make it a perfect rectangle. So it was really off whenever I placed it. And I noticed that and instead of just rolling with it, 
I did it over because I want y'all to have the correct instructions on how to do this. Okay, so that doesn't look bad. Like, remember, people are viewing it like this. They're not viewing it like this, okay? Nobody should be viewing your images that close. And if they are, then holy crap. So we're going to double click on here and that's a lot better. It's an actual rectangle and we're going to put our back cover here. It's got our blurb for the book and that fits so much better than what it did beforehand. And I'm going to make it a little bigger because I don't want the spine over here to be showing at all. And so just a tad bigger, move that up a little bit. All right, and so we're gonna place it. We're gonna X out of here. We're gonna press save. And we are going to bring the opacity up to 80%, just like the rest of it. And here it is, guys. You see how it kind of is crooked right there? Um, to fix that, what you have to do is you have to unlink your layer mask and then um, you can control T warp and you can see that those lines that I was telling you about kind of need to be adjusted a bit because you can really see it when there's words on the page that things are not completely straight. So that's why it's really important whenever you are basically adding a back page to make sure that these lines kind of go in the direction that the words should be on the back cover because if you pull it down look see what I'm saying so like it really does need to be straight and I think that actually looks pretty good I will tweak this until the end of time so yeah you just kind of make it where it looks right it looks real and now we're going to zoom out to where people will actually be looking at it. I mean, on Instagram, guys, it's like this big. <laughs> okay, so on Facebook, it's probably this big. Nobody's going to be looking at it this big. But if you wanted to look at it like that, you know, you could probably tweak this spine right here. I would probably tweak that just a tad where it kind of matches up just a little better. But the thing is, is like, you're seeing all your mistakes and your flaws, and most other people aren't. Um, just be aware that whenever you unclick that layer mask, anything that you did down here, like erasing and stuff, you might have to refix that. So I relink them, zoom back out, and that's it. So yeah, this is how you do the back cover, the spine, and the front cover. Essentially, with these tools, you can put your cover on any book in any setting. If it is just a spine or whatever, you would use these same principles. And that's all I have for you all today. I hope that this tutorial was helpful and helps you succeed in Photoshop for all of your marketing for your literary life. And if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them below and I will try to help you as best as I can. I appreciate you being here. And if you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I hope you have an amazing week. You accomplish all your goals and you write all the words. I'll see you again in my next video. Bye.